in this series we will be solving the questions given in the book principles of quantum mechanics by professor ramamurthy shankar so professor ramamurthy shankar is a professor at yale university he is a fantastic teacher uh, you could visit his website at yale university and watch the videos video lectures that he has given for a few courses uh, at yale university so i will provide the links to his courses and his uh, lecture videos in the description you could check them out so the the video lectures are available at yale open courses and they are basically aimed at undergraduate physics courses covering a wide range of topics like mechanics electricity and magnetism as well as quantum mechanics So this is a book written by him Principles of Quantum Mechanics and I believe it's a very good book to learn quantum mechanics from and why I say so is because this book contains the mathematical framework that is required to understand quantum mechanics most books just assume that you have the mathematical background the prerequisites to understand the language of quantum mechanics but in this book we start from the very basics of the mathematical framework that is required to understand the principles of quantum mechanics so in that sense i feel this is a very complete book and basically you could learn quantum mechanics right from the beginning with the help of this book so in this uh basically in this video and in the upcoming videos we will be solving the question answers and we will start with chapter 1 so chapter 1 as i said is basically the mathematical framework that is required so chapter 1 it is called mathematical introduction and in this basically it starts with the basics of linear vector spaces so the first question that we are going to look at today is exercise 1.1.1 this is based on the definition of linear vector spaces and the axioms uh, that define the linear vector space so before that before we understand what this question is about and what we need to prove in this question we need to be aware of a few definitions so the first definition given in this book is the definition for linear vector spaces i will write it down for you over here it says a linear vector space a linear vector space this is denoted by this symbol v So a linear vector space is a collection a collection of objects so what are these objects these objects are denoted by these symbols and what are these symbols that i am writing uh these are basically called vectors called vectors for which there exists so now these vectors will basically have a definite rule they will follow a definite rule definite rule for the vector sum and how do we denote the vector sum this is how we will write the vector sum the next thing is definite rule for multiplication 
by scalars and these scalars are denoted by this small a small b now there are certain axioms that uh, these objects called vectors will have to satisfy so the first axiom is the result of these operations is another element another element of the space so how do we denote that we say that v plus w belongs to the same vector space now this property is no what is known as the closure property closure property next axiom is on scalar multiplication we have defined the multiplication by scalars over here so for scalar multi multiplication scalar multiplication is distributive in the vectors so this is what it means this property is known as the distributive property next we have another property on scalar multiplication itself this time scalar multiplication is distributive in the scalars sorry i wrote the wrong thing we don't have w we have only v over here so this is again scalar this is again uh, about scalar multiplication showing the distributive property but the first one was distributive in the vectors this one is distributive in the scalars next axiom is also about scalar multiplication this says that scalar multiplication is associative what this means is that this is the meaning of this associative property so this is associativity next uh, axiom is on addition so addition is commutative that is the order in which we add the vectors does not make any change so this property is called commutative next axiom is again about addition it says addition is associative 
this is associativity of addition next is an axiom for the zero or what is called the null vector there exists a null vector which is denoted by this zero so how is this zero vector defined it's defined that if you add the zero vector to a vector v then the result is the same vector v so addition of a zero vector does not change the vector then finally we have an axiom on the inverse so for every vector v there exists an inverse an inverse vector now this inverse is under addition this is an additive inverse what is the definition of this inverse it is defined as if we add the inverse of a vector to itself then we will get the zero vector or the null vector so this is the first definition that is given in the book and these are the axioms be, uh, that are supposed to be followed by every ve linear vector space that we have so the elements of the linear vector space will follow all these eight axioms that we have written where the sum is defined by this vector sum and the scalar multiplication is also defined so these are the eight axioms which uh, which the members or the elements or the vectors of a linear vector space need to follow now a very nice way in which uh, professor shankar summarizes all these axioms is that he says do what comes naturally so i quite like this summary because if you look at these axioms these are basically what we have been pretty much familiar with during our high school mathematics we have not been taught in the formalism of linear vector spaces but typically let's say the uh, the number system that we learn in schools so the numbers the scalars that we learn in schools these pretty much follow these axioms that we have for example if we have take two uh, integers say for example 2 and 3 then 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2 is equal to 5 so that means addition is commutative we see that every day similarly the associativity property and all these other properties and axioms that we have written are basically very natural we have been learning it all throughout our school days but we have not been learning it in the formalism of a linear vector space these definitions and these terminology might be new for us but the features the axioms are pretty much natural for all of us i would believe so this is a very nice way that he sums up i quite like it now comes the question so the question is basically uh there are certain uh basically certain derivations from these axioms that one can do so certain conclusions that we one can draw certain implications that one can draw from these axioms and four uh, conclusions uh, professor shankar has drawn in his book in uh, for these from these axioms and we will write them down and the task of the first question is to prove those four conclusions that we have so the first one is we will write it in a different color maybe so the first one is the first one says that zero or the null vector is unique what does this mean this means 
So we cannot have two null vectors for a given linear vector space. We can have one and only one unique null vector. The next one is then we have another one on the inverse. This one says about the uniqueness of the additive inverse. So as you see again these four conclusions from the axioms are again pretty much natural to us. For example when we consider integers we know 0 times any integer is 0. Similarly, we know minus times an integer, let's say minus 5, is basically minus of 5. So, these are pretty much natural. But uh, these are not axioms. These four are not axioms. We need to prove these four conclusions based on these eight axioms given above or from this definition 1. So, now our exercise is basically to prove these four implications or four conclusions from the axiom. So, let us start with the first one. We need to prove the uniqueness of the null vector. So, how we will do that? Let us do it by the method of proof by contradiction. So, we will start by saying that let there be two null vectors. So, let 0 and 0 prime be two null vectors. So, this is for the vector space V that we have. So, two null vectors in the vector space V. Now, so since these 0 and 0 prime are two null vectors, so what we have from the axioms is that some vector V, so, so let us take some vector V belonging to the vector space v. So, some vector v plus this null vector is v as well as the same vector v plus this 0 prime null vector is also v. Okay. So, these are the this this is basically coming from the axioms from the definition of the null vector. Now, from this from these two what can we conclude? We can say that v plus 0 is equal to v plus 0 prime. Right? So, this is correct. Now, when we subtract v vector from both the sides, what we get is 0 equal to 0 prime. So, we have proved the first implication from the axioms. Now, let us look at the second. So, to uh, prove the second one, let us start by the definition of the null vector. So, the null vector by the definition of the inverse is given by this that if we take a vector v and we add its inverse minus v to it, then the resultant sum is the null vector. This is coming from the axioms. If we go up over here, see this one, this last axiom that we have uh, gives us this equation. So, now we have this to start with. So, how do we proceed further? Let us write this. What I did? So, this v is basically 1 times v. This is coming from the scalar multiplication. So, we know, know that v is just 1 times v. Now, we can expand this one and write it 0 plus 1 times v plus the additive inverse. Then we can use the distributive property of the scalar multiplication. So, we have this distrib scalar multiplication is distributive in the scalars. This axiom we will use now. So, we will use this axiom. So, what will we write? We will write z this is equal to 0 times v plus 1 times v plus 
minus of v right so this is what we are getting now again see from the definition of the null vector this is nothing but the null vector so what we get is that the null vector is nothing but so from here we will write 0 times v plus the null vector now we know from the axioms of the null vector that if you add the null vector to some vector then that vector is unchanged see we will have this property over here this second last one there exists a null vector 0 obeying v plus 0 is equal to v so this thing is nothing but 0 times v and we have proved what we wanted to prove why this is coming from from this previous step to this step is because adding a null vector leaves the vector unchanged so 0 v plus 0 is basically 0 v so the null vector is 0 times the vector v so we have proved even the second one now let us come to the third one this third one this is about the additive inverse we need to prove about that so let us in this case let us start with taking the vector v and adding its additive inverse to it okay so uh, okay so let us not start from this one okay let me let me do something else we will start with this okay so we are taking v and adding minus v to it now from the uh, distributive property what we get we get 1 plus minus 1 we are taking the scalars out from uh, from this we are taking the scalars common this is nothing but the uh, distributive nature of scalar multiplication so now what we will what this is this is nothing but 1 plus minus 1 is nothing but 0 so this is 0 times v and this is nothing but the null vector we have proved it just above in this 3 so 0 times v is nothing but the null vector we just proved it right now so and what is this null vector this from the axioms is given by the vector v plus the addition of its additive inverse so this is what uh, we get from the definition of the null vector so what we have right now we will write it let us write it again we have v plus minus v is nothing but v plus the additive inverse of v so if we subtract again this vector v from both sides what do we get we get negative of v is equal to the additive inverse of v this is what we started to prove and this is what we have finally proven so now we have only one last conclusion to prove which says that the, the additive inverse is unique. So, we need to prove the uniqueness of additive inverse. Again, let us uh, prove it by the method of contra. Sorry, this is not 5. We will prove this fourth conclusion by the method of uh, proof by contradiction. So, let us say that let minus V and W be two inverses of the vector v okay so by the definition of the inverse what do we have we have v plus negative of v is equal to 0 and also since w is also now the inverse we have v plus w is equal to 0 the null vector so from these two what do we get if we from these two we get v plus negative of v is equal to v plus w if we subtract v from both the sides we will get negative of v is equal to w which means that the inverse is unique so 
we have completed the first exercise the first exercise was basically to the first exercise was to prove all of these four uh, conclusions from these basic eight axioms that we have based on this definition one of the linear vector space so we have finally managed to uh, complete this exercise and i would like to reiterate this statement do what comes naturally as you have seen that all these conclusions and all these axioms uh, you might get overwhelmed seeing these eight axioms and all these conclusions from them but they are very much natural to all of us and we just need to realize that all these axioms are very much fundamental and all these uh, implications from these axioms are something that can be proven quite easily so yeah here is the proof of all the four statements if you want you can take a snapshot